and they don't care because all we care about is having three things met when the three things aren't meant why are you trading right something i used to love to say is if you're if you're like a a pilot right and you're you're in your plane and in the plane you know it's time for takeoff so you're like okay i need to do the the takeoff procedure okay lights on whatever the fuck engine on right click in all the stuff and then one of the clicks fail right and in the book it says make sure all clicks are on before taking off when that click fails do you go you know what fuck it i don't need that click and try this one i this one this one doesn't work too fuck it i don't need it let's take off you know right into the fucking ground and you're dead you know that's what's going to happen if you don't allow all the clicks to be in place just like if you're reading a manual for taking off a plane and you're doing the takeoff procedure and one of the procedures isn't met why the fuck are you trying to fly the plane quick disclaimer these videos are meant for educational purposes only anything said or shown in any of these videos are personal opinion and my perspective a trading carries a high level of risk so anything done is your responsibility <laughs> Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to MentFX. And we just had, well, at least I just had one of my best trading sessions in the world, or actually just one of my best trading sessions this entire year. Um, and we're about midway through the year. So it's really cool to see. Um, came onto the chart today with this bias right here. Um, just came in with a Euro USD on the 30 minute. I'm mainly trade EU, as you guys know, uh, looking for it to clear all lows and looking for that bearishness to come in. Um, it's been it's been very interesting in terms of its structural plays. However, we've been bearish like I think forever, and you guys are probably getting bored of hearing how bearish I've been on EU and how bullish I've been on UJ. I know some guy in the comments really really disliked that, but it was very funny to see. Um, so that said, you know we've been we've been retaining this bearish push the entire time, and starting this week off um, in our last webinar, we spoke about the shorts that would come in from this last up move before the down move, uh, specifically. These little inefficiencies and left behind SND zones, um, as taught in the private mentorship. And as we came up into that, um, we followed this four hour mitigation. The four hour broke down very nicely, um, broke down this entire leg, leaving behind another supply and demand zone. Once again, sponsored by the inefficiency. So we know that our supply zone is correct. And as price came up into it, you can see during the entire week, I've been very bearish on this, looking for this low right here to get cleared as the next point of liquidity, as I believe that, you know. Um, as we've transferred this week to strong hands and now we're retaining this daily push, I wanted to see the continuations here, which again, we don't need to be right or wrong. We just need a story and we need to be able to execute. One of the beautiful rules about trading, something that I think you find in Mark Douglas's book and trading in the zone, is that you don't need to be right to make money, just like everything in the market is random as well. right? So if everything is random and you don't need to make money, uh, if you and you don't need to be right to make money, then when you create a database of a system that actually creates an edge in your in your in your basically in your entire trading right well then what you allow yourself to do is as those rules are executed you allow yourself to just make money within any move whatsoever which is a really cool thing to be able to do and you'll also notice just by looking at this right so here's kind of my week in review i'm just going to zoom out for you guys before i zoom in so here's my like week in review you can see I didn't trade anything uh, back here when I followed this mitigation down, but you can see for, for the entirety of the week, you know, I was correct about the direction, whatever you want to call it, but throughout this entire beautiful push down from the original zone, all I took was a break even, a minus one, and a break even, right? Um, and I think there was one more, or was this the minus one right here? Um, yeah, this was my minus one right here, right? Yeah, so, you know, off of that mitigation, it pushed off beautifully. And all I took was a break even, a minus one, and a break even, um, and then another break even. And you know, it, it makes you really consider that it's not about being right in your analysis, right? People people tend to get caught up in their analysis and you know, they get they get very attached to the zones they have. And when their zones don't hold, they start, you know, they're crying like babies. You know, they, they wanna basically a lot of a lot of this industry is within the analysis jerk off porn, right? If you go into anywhere on Instagram, almost every like smart money concept trader or any new smart money concept trader is now reliant on this idea of look at how sexy my chart is please jerk off to it and you know join my only fans if you want to see more of these kind of charts but there's no there's no real push to um teaching a scenario or an entry criteria that that you can actually start utilizing within any given zone 
um, and then actually apply that to the charts, right? There's just this jerk off porn of, oh my God, look at the, right? So like, if this was my week in review, the idea on Instagram would be, we'd, we'd get rid of all these trades here. We'd go in and we'd find this zone right here. We'd draw that out like this. Not only would we do that, but we'd also refine this to make sure that it's not showing this mitigation like this, right? And then we'd be like, look at that. And then we'd zoom in right here, right? And this would be my only image this week. And we'd get rid of all this shit that makes it look bad, right? We'd make it look super clean. And we just have our little entry there. And we'd be like, please jerk off to my analysis porn, right? And there's, it, it doesn't take you further. It doesn't progress you as a trader. It doesn't teach you anything. All it teaches you to do is to get attached to the actual analysis rather than allow yourself to execute your actual rules, right? So it's not about your analysis being like correct every single time. It, just like the, just like that dog pee video, if you guys remember, right? It's more so about being able to draw out a story, a coherent story that makes sense to you and then allow that just to fail if it needs to, right? The reality of trading, um, as, as I love to put it, is that I'm wrong most of the time, right? I try, to, I try to teach this to my mentees, I try to teach this in my private mentorship, I try to teach everybody that I'm actually wrong most of the time. If anyone within my mentorship goes in through this MentFX trade ideas and just scrolls through, right? You have endless years, months, months, years of just my trades and why I take them and how I take them and then you have the specific breakdowns of them in the webinar recordings, right? But as we work through this, what you're going to see is you're going to see zones that I look at that just get fail and fail and fail and fail and fail and nothing happens. But the reality of it is I'm not taking losses as a result of it. Now there are some losses I take, but as you can see, even here, right, I'm correct about the direction I've been taking break evens and losses, right? Before, before the best week of my life, right? I just secured about um, <laughs> I just secured about 16.25 RR just today. And then yesterday, I believe, right? This is the eighth. What day is it today? I don't have my glasses on right now. So my, my eyesight is terrible. I can't even see myself in the camera on the right here because I have another screen where I have this onto the right. Um, but I had the, um, what is this? 10, the 12.5 RR day just the day before, right? And it's been an absolutely insane week for me. Like this is probably another one of my best weeks in, in this, during this entire year, um, you know, and you can follow and see that all the way through. But the reality is, you know, it's not because I always pick the right zones. It's because I allow myself to pick all the wrong zones and I allow myself to confirm them and actually undergo this process as I love to teach and as it's been now poorly taught online, but structure SND confirm, right? Or Wyckoff as we, as we like to teach it. This has always been the case. I've been teaching this for over a year and a half now, um, a little bit longer actually, and nothing has changed. This has continued to, to apply the exact same way. And if you want to know more about it, or you want something that you can execute directly currently, like right now, you can check out the three box system. And of course, if you want to take that to its next level, you should definitely check out the mentorship. Now, that said, let's break down this beautiful day for you without the chart porn of, you know, um, just that I had this zone and that was it. So like I said, coming into the week and this was all recorded in the webinars, of course. So, you know, if you're in the private mentorship, you know, we spoke about this multiple times, um, but we spoke about EU being bearish, you know, UJ has been bearish and we've been still bullish. I mean, sorry, UJ has been bullish and we've been still bullish on this ever since the videos I started making around here. Um, so these moves have been absolutely beautiful. And we had like, we've had a, we've had a number of members catch this move up. So it's been amazing to see it. That said, I only took one break even on UJ and kind of stopped trading it. I wasn't on much during Asian sessions. Instead, I've been mostly on during the EU session. Um, so the analysis was based on this, uh, Dow theory break, right? As we love to teach it here, you have your Dow theory, um, which means we can trade from here, uh, for mentorship students. You're clearly aware of the double MB right here, as well as the institutional structure versus candlestick structure or, you know, institutional versus mid institutional. So whether you're public or private, you're going to be able to take something out of this video. Now that said, we have our last up move before the down move, leaving behind the inefficiency within here. So happy to go short from there. And then as price taps into our zone, once again, on a little bit of a lower time frame, you can utilize the rule of 30 here or once you once you gain understanding about what you're doing on these charts, you're not going to be you're you're not going to need to use this rule of thirty. Instead, you're going to be able to just to use the time frame that allows that basically gives this gives the actual move enough space to be confirmed, right? And then be reconfirmed, for instance, right? So the reality is the rule of thirty was kind of the the stepping block in terms of you know stopping to make the mistake of constantly looking at the lowest time frame within the biggest zone. Um, and then once you've understood that stepping block, you'll be able to take, you'll be able to take another step back and begin to apply 
a number of time frames within any zone, right? Because I believe during this time I was looking at the six hour, the eight hour, the five hour, the three hour, right? And it's about it's about marrying the time frames together to figure out the story behind what smart money or what the composite operator was doing during that time, how that supply and demand had come into the market, and where the most likely mitigation based on those time frames is going to happen, and if it makes sense in in a in a context of the actual story. So right now, you know, if we want to think about it, our three box comes from this high to this low, right? So here's your main impulse here's the snd of that impulse and now we're looking to confirm that right now with wyckoff right and we're going to go deeper into that so start of the week we sent out this um, looking for the continuation bearish from these points as price tapped into those bearish points dropped down to a lower time from here we began to follow this mitigation and follow these plays this was i think last week right this is the third of june let's double check everything yep so that was last week this was friday and then the fourth started right about right about here. So the force starts here. Um, at that point, you know, I wasn't really watching anything. I wanted shorts, but it was kind of long in here. So this is a great example, like we spoke about in that GU video, where, you know, it's not about just finding the most instantaneous push and just trying to get in because you need to trade. You don't need to do that. You're a retail trader, which means you're an individual that can make his own choices or her own choices. And you're not being you're not being forced to trade, right? A lot of people working in banks or um, hedge funds or anything like that are you know they're there for their nine hours and they need to be doing things they need to be actively doing things you don't a lot of my trading is take my break even take my loss done for the day take my win done for the day right today's trading session took about i believe 30 minutes total right from the second i got on and sent out this bias right here of going short on the 30 minute so i'll show you guys that right here right so i sent this out this morning when price was right here and sent out this bias to go short and now start to liquidate these lows. And you can see that despite the fact that I have demand zones on here, I'm looking to liquidate them, right? This is a good example where, where chart porn dies, right? Because this kind of understanding, or these kind of zones here, or even this one right here, which is no longer important, but you know, I still had on my chart, um, are, are zones that made up the story about what I'm doing now, right? And you don't get this from the chart porn you find elsewhere. So make sure that when you choose your mentor, it's someone that's you know actively showing you things that consistently fail, things that consistently lose, things that consistently get confirmed and lose, things that consistently don't get confirmed and just move away, and things that consistently go break even or even win, right? Otherwise, what are you doing, right? If you if you want this idea of, of jerking off to just chart analysis, then you can, but it's not going to get you anywhere, right? There's, a, there's like this huge hype around smart money, but now the hype isn't around, hey, I have this system that that can provide me a why and can over time create a mathematical edge that I can then execute and do extremely well on better than, you know, almost any other system, at least for me that I've tested. Right. But then you have a lot of people looking at that and going, nah, I just want to see like these 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 chart markups, right? The markups is what everyone cares about, but it's not going to it's not going to take you anywhere. Right. It's not going to get you anywhere. So we came into the start of the week with or not start of the week into today's trading session with this expectation to go much lower. And you can see we've done that now. I'm still after this liquidation here. You can see I'm still actually after the liquidation here of this low as per this four hour impulse right here, right? So always important to consider where you are in the, in, in the overall structure, right? You have to be working from the top down and you have to be able to reconsider and answer at any point where you are in that move. So today when I saw this, this, this move right back up into the zone, you know, yes, we're hitting liquidity. Yes, we're breaking structures on the lower time frame. But what we're doing and what's most important is we're hitting that four hour zone once again, right? A higher up into it. And, you know, it doesn't matter that we have all this liquidity here, right? Yes, that's what's getting cleared. Yes, we're clearing the structural point of this liquidity. We're clearing this liquidity. We're clearing this equal high liquidity and we're clearing this liquidity. But the reality is that doesn't matter. This is what's so important about this, right? You take these three rules and you learn to apply them properly. The idea of liquidity and the understanding of liquidity um, is a byproduct of following these rules correctly, right? I've seen a number of smart money traders that came from other places um, that then joined my mentorship that made the exact same mistake of, you know, in areas they were before, all they're doing is they're sitting there going, where's my liquidity? Where's my fucking liquidity, right? And what's happening, and we love to talk about this, but what's happening is regardless of the time frame you look at, right? What a lot of dumb smart money is doing is they're going, okay, here I go. I have liquidity here. I have liquidity here. I have liquidity probably forming here. Look at these equal highs right here. I have liquidity here. Look at that clear equal highs. I have liquidity forming right now, right here, right? And all they're doing is they're looking for liquidity anywhere they can find it. Any equal high, equal low. 
But the second you do that, you put yourself back into the retail shoe of analysis thinking, right? The, the dumb money side. Because what you're doing is, once again, whether you're looking at double bottoms or double or double tops to sell off of or buy off of, or if you're looking to liquidate them, you're doing the exact same thing, just flipped, right? Double bottoms and double and double tops work sometimes, just like finding the liquidity will work sometimes. But if you're just after any double top or bottom as a liquidation, or after any double top or bottom as an entry, well, then you're just doing the same thing you did before, but now you're in this, I'm the voodoo smart money space king, right? That's not how it works. Liquidity is a byproduct of understanding where you are from a higher time frame to a lower time frame. When you understand where you are within a range or within a structural delivery from a higher time frame to a lower time frame and figure out where the price wants to be heading in terms of if this is my higher time frame wants to head here, then we understand that anything below is acting as liquidity. So now when we have the inside ranges, we know that this low or these equal lows act as a much better liquidity target than these equal highs. Right, that's how you have to start thinking. Liquidity is a byproduct of the ranges that you're able to understand from a higher to lower time frame bias. And as you're able to narrate that story and contextually put yourself into a frame, such as this morning, right? When I saw price here, why am I looking for the shorts? I'm not looking for the shorts because we're clearing this liquidity and this liquidity and this liquidity and this liquidity and this liquidity. No, I'm looking for shorts because coming into the week, now for actually for months, for over six months now, I've been short on this market overall. Coming into the week, we are mitigating a daily zone. And from that daily zone, we are breaking down on the four hour time frame from a week to strong hand transfer that's now breaking new bearish structure down. And that bearish structure breakdown, right, is coming directly from the last up move before the down move that is sponsored by inefficiency. And as long as this structure does not break, um, then all of this is this counts as mitigation. So when price taps into there to mitigate deeper, right? Or to even mitigate again, I'm not looking at this mitigation as a liquidation of these for the entry. I'm looking at the mitigation of this bearish structural range within the context of a bigger bearish structural range to go short. And guess what? The liquidity falls in line when this market and if if this market comes to liquidate this low and these lows, that's not because it's liquidating lows, right? I mean, it is, but it's not because of the actual lows being there. It's liquidating because that's the structural narrative of the market. And the main low that most people or dumb money are not positioned on to go long is at this low right here, which is where I expect right? As you can see my bias to come and clear the low and look at how beautiful, actually not beautiful. This chart is, this is what real charts look like, right? My, my usual charts throughout the, throughout the day when I'm trading myself are disgusting, right? This is what they look like right here, right? I'm literally doing stuff like this. I'm going back and forth. And if we zoom in and just kind of follow this for a second, notice how many zones fail, right? I have a break even here, right? You can see the zone actually held beautifully, but I took a break even and then it ran. Then you can see all these zones in here. None of them gave me an entry, right? If we keep following, I didn't watch anything here. I was just off during this time, right? If we keep following this forward, right? Notice this beautiful zone. It holds, never gave me an entry breaks down. And then I had multiple zones I could go short from. Usually I teach you guys not to think in multiple zones like this. However, in certain cases where the structural narrative across timeframes makes sense to go short and gives you valid zones across the, the play and is still coming from a structural point up here, right? Cause this was the overall um, structure that was actually created in, in my book. I was confirming each one of the, each one of these zones, but guess what? Even in this area, how many zones failed? One, two, three, four, five. And then the confirmations of them, six, seven, eight. I can't really see that well. I think I had a nine in there. Okay. So about nine zones failed in just the course, right? Of about one hour. And within those nine zones that failed, I took one loss and nothing more right? Zones fail all the time. Structural impulses fail all the time. You need to be willing to quickly adapt and change where you might've been and change your bias or contextually allow that bias to play out because you're aware of the higher time frame and just get in when your rules are met. If you're not able to do that, or if you're playing this game of chart porn and then, you know, you've been, you've been, you've been jerking off the chart porn for the last, you know, month and a half, three months, and now you're on your own chart and you draw four of these zones and not a single one holds, you think you're doing something wrong. You're not. The only thing you've been doing wrong is following all these, all, all these Instagrammers that, that again, it's not even just about the smart money space, right? This chart porn thing exists everywhere, right? People just want this clean thing. It's like, shit, that's so fucking clean. You know, I'm gonna get rich off how clean this is. And then they go on and they're like, all right, clean, 
<gasps> and then it fails. And then they're confused and they don't know what to do. And they're getting liquidated and they start, you know, trading like a fucking idiot and they lose all their money. And that's exactly what happens every, every time, right? I had this bias during the week to come back up into these zones. You can see even during the week when I was very bearish, I was actually willing to be bullish from here to come and come into these zones. And guess what? Another zone failed down. No confirm at all. Isn't that beautiful? Remember, at the core of everything, these three things will determine pretty much everything you will ever need in the smart money space. When you have all three valid, then the trade is valid. And again, not, not um, financial advice, right? When you just have these two and you're just playing this chart porn of drawing the perfect structure, the perfect little, where is it? The perfect little dots. I don't have my, um, my highlighter here, but the perfect little dots for the perfect little structure, the perfect S and D zone. It looks so beautiful. And then price goes right through it. You start thinking you're doing something wrong, whereas my members are looking to confirm the moves up into it, and they're just looking to confirm it as it absorbs potentially, and they don't care because all we care about is having three things met. When the three things aren't meant, why are you trading, right? Something I used to love to say is, if you're if you're like a a pilot, right, and you're you're in your plane, and in the plane, you know it's time for takeoff. So you're like, okay, I need to do the the takeoff procedure. Okay, lights on, whatever the fuck, engine on right? Click in all the stuff. And then one of the clicks fail, right? And in the book, it says, make sure all clicks are on before taking off. When that click fails, do you go, you know what? Fuck it. I don't need that click and try this one. I, this one, this one doesn't work too. Fuck it. I don't need it. Let's take off, you know, right into the fucking ground and you're dead. You know, that's, what's going to happen. If you don't allow all the clicks to be in place. Just like if you're reading a manual for taking off a plane and you're doing the takeoff procedure and one of the procedures isn't met, why the fuck are you trying to fly the plane? Similarly, when you're looking to take a trade and only two things are met because you've been used to this, you know, this chart porn that you've been watching, <laughs> This, this this whole video is gonna be so fucked but you're just used to all this chart porn about just seeing this you know beautiful structure beautiful s and hold and then you get in guess what's gonna happen right into the fucking ground over and over and over again okay i'm sorry for swearing i'm gonna stop swearing now but the point is that's exactly what i'm looking for and you can see how many zones i had during the week that just fail right we can zoom in here you can see i was bullish during the start of this day um, I was actually bearish from it, started to break down. I was looking to play the bullish up into the high again, into that four hour, because I expected price to potentially come and mitigate this again, because it was getting close. So what does that mean? These new structural points are going to act as proper potential liquidity. Price breaks down. Great. Guess what I took in here? A break even. Was wrong about another zone. Was wrong about this zone completely. Didn't get a confirm. Was wrong about this zone, but just took a break even. And again, remember, my break evens are minor losses because it's a much lower time frame, which means I'm still paying commissions. But... Um, I treat all break evens as a minus one and all losses as a minus two. And that still shows profitability in my edge over overall, because I look at these much higher R plays. Now, again, if you're not one of those people and want to have a lower R system, consider a higher time frame. That's all you have to do. It's very simple. Um, so as we've been begin breaking down again, I look to confirm and guess what? I get a perfect entry and this was just a beautiful runner plus 13.5, uh, plus 12.5. And I will be breaking this trade down fully, um, this Sunday in the webinar. Um, otherwise I, I think this video might be uploaded a little bit down the line. So it'll be in a prior webinar that you're going to see if you join up, otherwise, you know, you can go and try to figure out where my entry here was, because again, it's right in front of you. It's available. Um, and also if you are in the mentorship, just scroll up, you'll be able to see my week in review and exactly how I got positioned on this trade as well, including the one today, right? So again, coming into today, um, here we go. We come up into here and once again, we're tapping that four hour. I try to draw this in here so it's easier to see, but we're tapping into that four hour supply zone. And as we're doing that, once again, I was on the one minute, I was actually in bed during this time. And once again, we see this high right here formed by this low. And what I saw is this breakdown. And then I started seeing this break. And at the second I saw this break, I was in, I was in bed still. I was like, Oh fuck. You know, cause usually I start my, my, my trading day at around 9 AM. So this would be my trading day start. But oftentimes, um, you know, price isn't in an area where it's worthy of trading anyway. So I'm like, Oh, it's fine. You know, I'll, I'll take my time to get down to the computer. But this time I looked at it and I was like, Oh my God, we're like in it ran the fuck downstairs, had my alert set here. So what's actually funny is I actually made a mistake for my own analysis. Usually I do not enter areas, um, until I get that candlestick break. However, uh, at this time when I was looking at it, the 32nd had broken. So the supply zone became valid. And once again, I began to follow it down. You can see zone finally holds zone holds and beautiful, right? But if you, if you once again, just go back for a second and think about this breakdown, right? The original break, look at this. Here's a beautiful zone that would have been a perfect entry if price had gone to it, but it never did. 
right? So once again, is this your analysis playing poorly? Is this you having a bad judgment in terms of choosing zones? No, it's normal price delivery. Price does not always have to come back to these zones. We are not ever certain whether or not a real mitigation needs to take place. However, when we get our structural narratives and we and we basically contextualize them from a higher to a lower time frame, right? And then you have a mitigation, then we allow that understanding to play into um, an actual trade. When we get that move away and no mitigation, we don't sit there going, oh my fucking God, my chart porn, I need to have this zone come back. Oh shit, that might've been loud. I'm sorry, guys. Right? We're not sitting here going, oh my God, it needs to come back. It needs to come back. Please come back to the zone because we don't care. New zone is put in the motion. We know that new smart money is entering is entering the market. We know the composite operators is basically holding his supply or holding his protected high at the next structural points and if it's true what we expect to be true which is that we're in a bearish bias coming into a four hour zone and 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 um mitigating it and we're breaking down we should see a smart money based entry in the form of structure snd confirm and that's exactly what we saw here and then i looked to basically take that all the way lower i had a next partial set all the way here but i ent i exited off of the dow theory that i teach you guys i think it was off of five second i'm gonna sh 10 second actually i'm gonna show you that guys right now also, trading view just added 10 seconds, which is really cool. Um, but low is made, made by this high. And what do you think I followed, right? So again, we draw out that Dow theory of lower high, lower low. Break one, right? Well, actually, in this case, we had break one and then it broke back down, right? Then we had this break right here, break one. And you can see this mini pullback, break two. And that's where I closed. On the close of this candle was my closure of the entire trade. Had a partial here, had a partial here, and closed the whole thing here. Again, if I held, you know, it would have been great, whatever. We don't play the what if game in trading, right? This is not analysis porn. We just do our thing. We figure out where we are. We confirm our play. We take our break even as we need to. We take our minus ones as we need to. We take no trades as we need to. And then we take the wins as we need to. And we allow them to manage and we play them out to fruition. And it's a beautiful story. But notice how along all of this, at no point did I have to say, we're targeting the fucking equal low liquidity of here and the low liquidities of these and these equal lows. No, because the liquidity, once again, is a byproduct of those three rules, right? When you understand where you are within a structural narrative, within an SND narrative, and within a confirm narrative, and again, what's SND? It's supply and demand. Um, you will get a lot more information on it within the private mentorship. However, I have tons of info on it within my public YouTube channel, you just check out any of the recent videos, you know, we break this down every single week. The byproduct of many things like finding your targets or liquidity is based on this. When you understand what a higher time frame structural impulse or narrative is telling you and where price is most likely to head, when you have the mitigations of those zones, you're not looking at those mitigations as, oh my God, we're liquidating all these highs, we need to get short. No, you're looking at this mitigation as, hey, we're mitigating the supply of a higher time frame bearish leg that is within a much higher time frame bearish um story therefore i'm going to confirm it to go short and guess what now what i could do is i could delete everything here right so here's here's the chart porn side of things right everything could be deleted for a second and i could go you know beautiful highs you know here's here's the little the little x right the beautiful liquidation right and then we go in here and we find our perfect little high boom right there yeah buddy yeah and i'm gonna go post this on instagram you know this is your your chart point that's not going to get you anywhere right this won't take you anywhere because there's liquidity guess what everywhere there's liquidity here there's now liquidity here there's now liquidity fucking up here there's liquidity up here that we can't even see you know there's liquidity everywhere it's a dumb way to think you need to be able to create a story to figure out where the liquidity is and guess what when you create that story and you understand the structural narratives you're actually in you're instantaneously creating overall liquidity targets which inside will have their own liquidity targets so once again when i have this demand zone and i was looking basically not even to trade it just to see the mitigation off it to understand it that it came to mitigate then the four hour and as it broke down why was it that i sent out the expectation that it's going to basically clear lows and it's going to keep clearing lows despite this being a demand zone that held right a lot of smart money is looking at this demand zone that held going hey it's holding this is a bullish this is a bullish imperative it's going bullish right when in reality once again they're forgetting to go from a higher to a lower time frame stasis and they're just getting chopped up in the middle and once again there's just no there's no bearing on understanding there when you're when you understand how to create targets such as understanding where you are structurally and then having the target of the next structure you also create basically everything else within and you know when zones 
or you can you can anticipate with very good understanding what zones will hold and what zones will just be traded through right i'm not surprised this zone didn't hold right it's a bullish zone within a very bearish narrative all good this bullish zone i wouldn't be surprised if it came right through it but in this case it came up from it and as it did that guess what my bias is still to go short just because this zone broke a structure doesn't make it potent or strong it just made it it just made it a data point within this structure until it came to mitigate a higher time frame and when the higher time frame takes effect and that mitigation plays and that's when we look to get short that's where the beautiful plays are now again you know i could have could have held this way down you know i don't play the what if game in trading um i just manage this accordingly um taking taking off my partials at every area and then closed and that's my week complete right this is uh what is it it's six nine <laughs> it's june 9th so you know it's thursday i don't usually trade fridays or sometimes i do if i if i haven't had like a crazy good week but my week has been absolutely phenomenal it's been a in it's been a crazy week i've had my last four weeks five weeks now um in trading have been just fucking intense like so good um and that's just the byproduct of following rules so you know follow your rules guys i hope this video helped out thank you